Hello, hello, hello. Amber Geiger is guilty, you guys. I said that in all of my previous tapes. If you look back, everything I said, I guess the guilty felt the same way and many more people felt that way. Amber Geiger went to Botham John's apartment and killed him in cold blood because she wanted to. Not because it was the wrong apartment, because you have all the signs around you to let you know where you are going. And you being a police officer, you know things around you. How could you not see a big red mat? Amber Geiger had a bad disposition in her energy on the stand to me. And if I felt it, other people felt it, you know the jurors were gonna feel her energy also. And like I said, on one incident, she almost cursed and she caught herself when her um, attorney was asking her a question in front of the jury. I'm gonna stop right now and tell you guys, I really, really thank you for tuning in to my shows and my commentary. And please click like, share, and subscribe so that I can come back with more. But I had to come on today uh, in disguise because I really wasn't dressed to uh, actually do this. But when I saw that breaking news, it was just what I already knew. You can look at my dates, you can look at my videos, everything I said came to the light. Many, many people knew the same thing. And you know what I was wondering? Why wasn't her folks in court with her all along the way? They was only there yesterday, you guys. I mean, the trial had been going on for over a week and she had none of her family members were there. And it's possibly because they knew that Amber Geiger was guilty. And guess what, you guys? Another thing, when I, I went online and I you know, did my little research, I was just typing away and I put her name in, she popped up. I had no idea she had shot someone uh, uh, a person that was unarmed last year in 2017. So she was trigger happy. She shot an innocent person, they said, last year online in 2017. That's what I pulled up and I, I said, oh my God, she's a shooter. I mean, she hasn't even been on the force for five years and she's already in this, she shot one person and, and I guess it was her partner or someone online that said that someone took the gun from her to prevent this person from getting killed. They stopped her. Oh my God, she's a killer. She's a killer. Because she shot an innocent person trying to identify someone and shot the person and the other person ran and took the gun from her. So they didn't say what person took the gun from her, but in my thoughts, I think it probably was um, someone that she was working with, one of the other officers or something, because I don't think a civilian would be able to take the gun from her because she probably would have killed them. But they said when that other officer, whoever it was, took that weapon from her after she shot that person once, that's what saved their life. Amber Geiger shot someone just last year and tried to kill them, and they were innocent. Then she comes back and lies and goes to Botham John's apartment, walking down, like they said, all these doors with numbers on it, and you're gonna tell me. And just look at my last video. I said, I don't buy it. I don't buy that. I don't buy you being a police officer and you didn't see the big red mat. So today the jury has found Amber Geiger guilty of murder and she can get from five years to 99 years or possibly life in prison. Wow. I already knew it. I mean, how did she think she was gonna get away? But see, she thought she was gonna get away because she see a lot of other officers get away that did wrong. But like in Houston, Texas, when these officers went in with an illegal raid and they shot up this beautiful Caucasian couple they, uh, they are going to be found guilty and they lost their jobs right away. So why didn't she lose her job right away? They lost their jobs right away for shooting into someone else's home and they're in the privacy of their own home and they were innocent. 
you can't barge into somebody's house and just start shooting them. And you knew it wasn't your house because of the red carpet and the number on the door and the light in the hallway and just a whole bunch of lies. It was like the uh, prosecutor said, it was absurd. It was horrific. It was cold, calculated. It was awful. It was mean. It was evil. Just like she looked. She looked hard. She didn't have anything soft about her on that stand that would make me feel sorry for her. Nothing. I mean, even her hands, if you saw, she did uh, some type of gesture with her hands and her hands were stiff like, mm, like a, a bullet, like a trigger hand. She had trigger fingers. She was trigger happy. Because if she shot an innocent person last year and then she comes back this year, since she didn't get to kill that one, she came back and killed this one. And now guess what? Because she opened up the can of worms, as I said in my last video, that ex-lover cop of hers, they're going to investigate him because he killed an unarmed African-American man. I think it was 2007, somewhere in there. 2005 to seven, I think it was seven. And he was unarmed as well. So see, like I said before, she felt like because all these other cops were getting away with shooting and killing people, that she could too. And she thought she could walk away with it. Because if she thought that she was wrong, so wrong, she would not have been texting that ex-lover cop after the incident. Her mind would have been somewhere in another zone, like I said. And then still texting him for sex as if it's just another one bite the dust. She didn't give a damn. She had no remorse in her heart. She didn't even do CPR on him. She lied and said she gave him uh, commands. No one heard it. She did say, I tried to do CPR on him. I used one hand. A little. I tried a little. A little? You killed him. If you didn't try, see, I think that's what the jury went on. If you didn't try to save his life, that means your intent of going in was to kill him. Because if she would have tried wholeheartedly, because even on the tape, like I said, when I heard her, kept saying, stay with me, bud, stay with me, bud. But it wasn't sincere in the voice. And then she walked out of the apartment and was on the phone saying she was waiting on people to come. That was the time she could have been in there doing CPR on him. And like the prosecutor said, she could have put it on speakerphone and used both of her hands. And when they got there, they should have seen her standing by his side trying to save his life. That lady was, that lady was cold-blooded. She wasn't fit to be a cop. I mean, she made the Dallas Police Department look stupid. That was just how she did it to them because they trained her properly and she went out and didn't follow her guidelines because she didn't follow them at all because she was messing with the cop on the job, messing up a family, sending a married man all these nasty text messages. I mean, I mean, she was a scumbag, man. I'm just gonna put it to you like that. I don't give a damn what nobody say. That was a scumbag breaking up all of these homes and making the Dallas Police Department look bad. And now that ex-lover cop of hers is going to be investigated for all of the stuff that he did in the 17 years because these parents, and especially the mother when he shot and killed this unarmed African-American man on 2007, they're going to look into that because the mother was online crying and saying he has to be looked into. They want him to lose his job. And also possibly the prosecutors probably want him to lose his job also because of interference when he deleted those text messages and being a police officer, he should have kept them or reported them. 17 years on the force. Uh, they're going to start looking into all of this illegal stuff going on. These are people to protect people, not to hurt and kill people. But if you're going to have people that's killing people and they're not out here trying to protect people, you know, of course, police officers are wonderful because we could not live without them. We need them, but we don't need them if they're crooked, 
because they're killing off the people they're supposed to help. You see what I'm saying? So it is a corrupt situation anytime you have people working for you. It does not even have to be just the police department. Anybody that has someone working for them and they are degrading the business because of them not doing what they are taught to do. Just like Amber Geiger. She knew to look around her. She knew she saw the big red carpet in the hallway and nobody else had one but that door. How could you not? Being a police officer. I mean, even a regular person like me, you or anyone else would see that big red carpet walking down the hallway, especially when you gotta pass about 16, 17 apartments to get there and you're looking on the floor and nothing else is there. When you walk straight ahead, it's a long view, so you have plenty of view to see exactly what's ahead of you. You see all of the doors with all of the numbers, and number four does not mean number three. They look totally different. And the flower pot again was not on the fourth floor like it was her floor because a young man that cried on the stand testified that when he went on her floor by accident, he saw the big flower pot plant. And that's what let him know he was on the wrong floor. And many of the people said that. I went all the way there, I, I went all the way. And when I got to a certain point, I noticed it wasn't my apartment. So what did they do? They turned around and went on. Even if she thought it was her apartment, you guys, this is where the jury probably saw fit to find her guilty. Even if it was her apartment and the door was cracked, she had a chance to turn around. Why would you walk into fire when you don't have to? And you have a, a phone on your, a cell phone and a walkie to call in for backup, which uh, the prosecutor pointed out in big bold writing, he said on the documentation it shows you know, what you are to do in those particular situations. And she said she was trained well. She followed the training. Why didn't she follow it that day? She wanted to kill him. Now, nobody knows if it was a relationship. Someone online, you know how people talk back and forth, said she was having sexual relationships with both and John. Nobody knows that but her and both and John because he's now gone. So he can't testify. And possibly if both and John, in my mind, if that was the case with them, and he had a girlfriend, and with her living below him, and she heard them engaging in sexual uh, situations, and she heard them, the commotion with him and whoever it is, she could have gotten jealous about that. And another thing I heard is that she had the keys to apartments because of the fact that she was a police office on duty and she's worked at those apartments. So you see what I'm saying? So she was found guilty. It wasn't like she didn't know what apartment she was going to. She was found guilty as all get out and she was trying to say she didn't see his hands but she didn't do any commands because nobody heard her but they heard him saying hey hey. You know? He probably was saying, hey, hey, because if indeed there was a relationship between them, how did you get in my apartment? You see what I'm saying? So the jury had all of the evidence presented to them, and it seems to me that it was point blank because of the fact it didn't take long. I thought it was going to take a couple of days, you know. I knew she was going to be found guilty, but I didn't know it was going to be that soon, you guys. But... It is what it is. The evidence speaks for itself. Being trained 3,000 plus hours and you didn't see a big red mat when you train to watch your surroundings, feel your energy, feel your surroundings, feel your environment at all times, just like you bagged in. So you see, and then another thing with that text mess, I mean, with that um, ex-lover of hers, when they said that... Um, there was a conversation just before she went and killed him that they were talking. Somehow, I don't think they were able to redeem that conversation. They were able to redeem all of those text messages, but it was something about that conversation that the prosecutor kept drilling her on. She pulled over 
to the side and talk with him about something and then went and killed him. And I didn't know anything about uh, the ex-cop had killed uh, an African-American man. I had no idea. And I really was trying to give her the benefit of the doubt because race wasn't an issue. I didn't, I didn't put race into this at all. Really, I didn't. And they didn't put race into it in court because only race thing I heard of it in court was when she on the stand said something that wasn't hate or anything like that. And no one asked her for that. And then at the end when they said, uh, this black man, consider a, a black man's life. So those are the only two um, racial things that I heard in this trial. So it, if it was about race, it was on her. It was in her heart to kill him because she really didn't want to put her mouth on him and do CPR. So that's why online when I heard that possibly she was in a relationship with him, and then on the other hand, I thought, I said, well, she couldn't have been because she didn't even want to do CPR on him. Or she could have been in a relationship and didn't want to CPR because he did something to hurt her so bad that she wanted him to die. And I think that in my mind, anytime you mess with a cop on the job, I think that she possibly had that hanging over his head and he probably wanted out with her because he did the right thing on the stands. He didn't take up for her at all. He told the truth. She was in a right mind, yes. She didn't seem this, she didn't seem that. He told the truth on the stand about her and he was not trying to help her. So in my mind, I feel that he possibly wanted out of a relationship, but he knew she was crazy enough to probably kill him too. That's the way I feel about it. Or let his wife know what was going on because he did not try to soften up anything for her. Also, I know even though he did that, he was trying to save his own face with his job, his family and everything too, because he knew if he would have been taken up for her on that stand, his wife possibly would have been more angry at him. So Amber Geiger caused a lot, a lot of stink. She really did. She messed up many families. She hurt many people, many people. Both and John's family handled the situation with class. They just wanted justice for both and John. Highly intelligent people, highly, highly sophisticated, as he was an intelligent man to society and had just, he had just came over here to try to better himself and got um, in college, I think it was Hastings. And people online were saying he was just a wonderful person, like muse, spiritual music, bright heart, you know, just because he was smoking weed. Many people smoke weed. They have legalized it uh, in California. So weed is not anything to hold against a person when they're in their own home. And who knows, Amber Geiger might smoke weed herself, but she's still sticking up for the apartment people. So to me, the situation was because either she had a relationship with him. These are my thoughts. Either she had a relationship with him and she heard him with a lady or knew he had someone else, or the apartment people uh, told her that he was smoking weed in the apartment. And because I heard that they had given her keys before to the building, to the apartment, to the units. Uh, and the reason I'm saying that, well, I'm gonna go back to what I was gonna say about that. Yeah, so, so either she had the relationship uh, with him uh, or the apartment people gave her the keys or she just wanted to shoot her gun again like she did last year and just kill somebody or, um, or because of the fact that he didn't want her anymore as well. You see what I'm saying? So it could have been that. And my thing is that it, it, it could have been connecting more with that weed situation in that apartment building because of the fact when I go back and I look at the tapes, uh, when the prosecutor asked her, did you talk to this person? He thought it was a man, but it was a woman. Did you talk to him about weed when they asked you, how did you like your apartment? She said, no. He said, you sure? She said, no, I didn't, I don't recall that. So he pulled out that paper, showed the text messages where she had asked this other, and she said, oh, no, it's not a man, it's a lady. She had asked her, 
another police officer lady. The lady asked uh, Amber Geiger, how does she like living in those apartments? And she said, oh, I like it, except for something about that marijuana, the weed and stuff. So she was connected with that weed. It's something about that weed. And then remember the guy got on the stand and said, well, him and both of John smoke weed together. Wow. And then they ripped into that deputy sheriff too, remember? At first he said, I think she did it in self-defense. And the prosecutor said, yes, uh, that's what you think. You think she did in self-defense because of what she told you, right? And he said, right. So her attorneys had him going. They had him going, boy. He was all the way for Amber Geiger. But when that prosecutor got through with him, he had to come on with it. He had to come on with it. That prosecutor was a man, he was he was good. He put the icing on the cake and he told it like it was. And he didn't sugarcoat anything because it was facts. It was a no brainer. He had everything right there, the big red mat. Talked about the flower pot and had the people to come and talk about it. You know, he had his stuff buttoned and tucked all the way down the line. It was no way Amber Geiger could have walked away with the murder of both and John in his own apartment, sitting, eating ice cream with all of his little apparatus stuff all around him. And she said, no light. You got the big bright hall light. She had to admit to that. You got the computer light. Even a computer light can have you move around the room. You can see a computer light and a TV light. So he had the television light, he had the computer light, and he had the hallway light when she opened that door and stood in that doorway on the red mat. And that was another thing. Remember in the closing arguments, he said, you see this big red mat? And she stood on it. She walked to it and stood on it. My Lord, something else. How did she think she was going to get by with murder because she was a cop? And she had somebody to do her hair all up in blonde, thinking that that was going to entice those men in court. The prosecutor walked right up to her. He said, you will pay for what you did. Did you guys see that? Because he could feel her spirit. These people know. I mean, they've been doing these jobs. The judges know. The prosecutors know. Even the attorneys know. But they're being paid to do a job. You can feel the vibes. You can look at her and tell. You can look at her and tell. And not to know that she, no one knew. The prosecutor probably knew that could have been why he came down so hard on her because he could have known that she shot someone last year, but they can't bring that in court because of the fact it wasn't about who she shot last year. They couldn't bring up that her ex-lover cop uh, killed an unarmed black man last year. They could not bring that up because that was not his trial. That's going to be a whole nother story uh, because these mothers are petitioning and they are online. They're saying they are going after him. And Amber Geiger opened up his can of worms. See, you could do stuff so long and get by. But if you dirty, a dirty cop, a dirty person, a dirty anything, all of that stuff comes to an end. You have to pay, especially when you take the life of another human being that you didn't give. You didn't bring that, that child into the world. And it's not your right to take them out unless they're trying to take you out with a gun in their hand. And he shot a guy uh, in 2007 that was unarmed. She shot someone last uh, year that was unarmed and was innocent looking for an identity of a person so if she was going to go around and just start shooting people because she didn't know what the hell she was doing she should have been found guilty anyway first of all she shouldn't have been on the force but a lot of that stuff slide they probably didn't investigate that they probably just felt like witness probably said oh yeah well she had to do it or whatever they just go by whatever because it is their people. Oftentimes employ employers, they stand up for their employees. They give them the benefit of the doubt, but when it comes to life, that should be a different thing. People should be looked into more 
investigated. And the prosecutors had other witnesses, but they didn't even have to bring them. They just cut it. Let's go ahead and get this over with. Because remember they said the trial was going to go on for at least two weeks, and it was only a week and a day, which was yesterday. Uh, a week and two days, because today was when the verdict was read. You guys, you guys, Amber Geiger killed Botham John for her own self-satisfaction, whether it was jealousy because she liked him and he had somebody else, um, or whether it was uh, because of the weed in the apartment because the apartment people had complained about the weed and she knew that him and this other neighbor had been smoking it. I mean, and I could imagine because the other little neighbor, he was on the stand and he had to break down and cry. I can imagine how he feel because it could have been him. It could have been him because they both smoke weed together. And or I wonder if the weed traveled because she was right above his apartment if it went through the vents. You know what I'm saying? It was something fishy to that situation. But they heard the commotion unless... Her and Botham John was having a relationship and he opened the door for her and went back to sit to eat his ice cream. You know? And he said, hey, hey, because he saw her when he opened the door with her. I don't know. All I know is that she saw that red, big red mat because it was like a huge light. A huge light. And you know what? It was meant for him to have that mat because that mat has given him justice. It was meant for him to be different because it was meant that he had a light on him as a human being. You could see it in his smile and his eyes, his demeanor. It was meant for that red mat to be a light in this case. It really was. Because if it hadn't have been for that mat, it would have been probably hard to prove. That red mat, I think, was a key witness. I mean, a key object, not witness, but a key object in this particular case. You guys, thank you for tuning in and justice will be served. Uh, they'll be doing the sentencing, I think at one o'clock today, um, central time. So we'll see what happens next. But Amber Geiger, she had to pay for killing that young man in his own home, convenience of his own home. And anyone can put themselves in that position. If you're sitting in your home and somebody come in and just start shooting you, because they want to, or they're mean and bitter and hostile, trigger happy, and they just want to kill somebody. I'm not going to even say kill a black man. They just want to kill, shoot to kill. And that's what she said when she had those choices to run away. That was really something. Just like this black cop in Houston did to that white couple. It's the same thing. The black cop in Houston set up an illegal sting and they just start shooting in this white couple's home. Beautiful white couple. Of course, they smoked their weed too, but that was their home. And he had other people that he brought in, just like Amber Geiger brought in this ex-lover and brought in all these other people that she's caused grief to. He brought in other officers, set up the sting, and these people were innocent, you guys. It was the same thing that Amber Geiger did. She did it to the black man. He did it to the white couple. Race has nothing to do with this when people have egos and they want to just, they're just mean, just the devil, pure out hell. Because many people in Houston said that man was hell on the streets. And he also shot some of his own people and killed them for no reason. Shot off their fingers and toes and this and that and he was horrific also. And he had been on the force. Oh my God. So you see what I'm saying? These people uh, get in high positions, wear a badge, wear a gun, they walk around thinking they're the big bad wolf and they're taking this job to the wrong level of how they were trained just because of that reason. But now everyone's packing a gun everyone so it seems to me that police officers should learn to work with the civilians so none of this killing and stuff have to happen let's be friends let's work this out start showing love in the community to the criminals 
like talk to them, man, you know, I don't want to have to take you to jail next next year or have you locked up in jail. So let's try to be work this out together. You know, what can I do to help you? Uh, you know, just start being nice to them opposed to I'm going to take your butt to jail. Turn around, you know, and the person didn't do anything. You see what I'm saying? It's a certain way that uh, the officers have to engage with the uh, community to show these criminals that I'm not out to get you, but I just want you to do better in life. So what can we do so that this, you won't have to go to jail? I mean, what is it? Can I help you get in a training program, a therapy program or something like that? What can I do, man, to help you? You know how many people out here just need love? Like that Indian guy and the person that had that love is gone. You see the nice cop got killed. The Hispanic guy saw us killed uh, uh, Dolly Wong, Sandy Dolly Wong in Houston. He was a nice cop. But what did he get? A kick in the butt. The nice people, just like Botham John, a nice person. What did he get? Killed by a dirty cop. This stuff got to stop, you guys. People should love one another and be happy because nobody's going to live forever. No one. But at least while we're living, we can be happy and make this world a better place. Please click like, share, and subscribe. And I'll be coming back with more commentary. Pass the word. Share the message. And um, don't forget to click like, share, and subscribe. Thank you for tuning in. Guilty for it. And I am so, so happy. I didn't want to, want to um, like I said before I go, I did not want, uh, I wanted to give her the benefit of the doubt that she didn't know that it was her apartment. But after I saw the trial, I had no other choice but to break down and cry and know how that young man was feeling laying on the floor when she didn't do CPR. He had no love around him as he was dying in a, as an innocent person. I didn't do anything, and I'm dying. Mm. Thank you for tuning in. Click like, share, and subscribe. I gotta go. Bye.